Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, November 9th school board meeting. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, I would just like to say that um, Kathy's not here this evening. She is hopefully someplace much warmer and sunnier. Um, Alan, adjustments to the agenda. Yes, I have only two. Uh, one, I'm going to ask that we mo move the fall SEAF grants up so that what we'll do is, uh, under recognition, we'll do Karen Abbott, and then right after that, the fall SEAF grants so that they're done early. And the second one is I have laid at your tables uh, athletic trip request form that just came in to me yesterday, and this is the Varsity Boys and Girls Cross Country. So that's there, and so I have added it to uh, 7I, I think it is. Yes, it would be 7I on the agenda. So it would be consideration to approve Varsity Boys and Girls Cross Country trip to that Ford. Sounds good. Vermont on November 12th and 13th. And Jeff is here to speak about it when the time comes. Okay. Uh, do we have um, to add um, job descriptions also? Oh, yep. those aren't on? Yes. No. Okay. Nope. So we'll also need to do those. So that probably would be <coughs> J. J. Okay. J. Okay. Please. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Uh, approval of school board minutes. Is there a motion? I. I move that we approve the regular meeting Tuesday, September 14, 2010. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? 6-0. Okay. Um, regular meeting Tuesday, October 12, 2010. Minutes. Is there a motion? Did you make for both? I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. So moved. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Uh, any comments, discussion? All those in favor? 6 0. Thank you. Okay, comments by student representatives? Alan, School? you can give that second to her. She wanted it more than me. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Good evening. My name is Catherine Briggs, and I'm the secretary of the Middle School Student Council. And I'm Eva Neely, and I'm a representative. To open up, I'd like to mention the writing that we have been doing in the middle school. I'm happy to say that we are writing in more than just language arts. Many students say they've also done writing in the foreign language program, science, and social studies. I'd like to remind all middle school parents that the next 7th and 8th grade dance is December 10th from 7 to 9. We're looking for parent volunteers. If you're interested, just get in touch with Mrs. Zimmerman through the MSPA. It's really easy and a lot of fun. Thanks to all the parents that volunteered last time. On that note, the dance was a fun exciting, and exciting for the entire school. The theme was very inspiring, and as it is my first dance experience, I found it enjoyable. The excitement and announcements made it so that almost the entire 7th and 8th grade was included. Some students found the fact that there was a theme restricting, but many enjoyed the blackout theme. Almost the entire school is looking forward to the next dance, which is scheduled for December 10th, and the theme is undecided. I'd like to remind parents of students of children who participated in fall sports to, if they haven't already, return their uniform to Scott Labby, the athletic director. On the topic of sports, 7th, 8th, and expansion girls basketball have gotten off to a great start. The 7th and 8th grade team's first game is scheduled for next week against Greeley. 7th and 8th boys basketball will be going on later this season. We offer Nordic skiing to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. We have a swim team offered to 7th and 8th graders, and 6th if the numbers are small. We also offer indoor track to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Sign-ups will be through community services coming out soon. I would now like to mention the student council initiatives. We are doing an event called Stuff the Bus, a food drive, which will be a school-wide event. So please encourage your children to bring canned food to school during the event. We are also planning a 5th and 6th grade social. The calendar this year so far is November 11th is Veterans Day, so there will be no school. On November 22nd through 23rd, we will have school, but we will not have school for Thanksgiving break on the 24th, 25th, and 26th. This first trimester ends November 30th, so the report cards will be electronically on the PowerSchool portal December 7th. 
In other information, I'd like to discuss the GChat conflict occurring in our schools. Many children spend their time on their laptop talking with friends on the Gmail chat program that the whole school uses. The problem is that the children are distracted, so detentions and other dis disciplinary actions have been given. The average seventh grader has 30 to 50 contacts, and many have admitted to chatting with teachers. School teachers are working on a resolution to the problem. On a more positive note, I'd like to tell you about what, what wonderful learning resources laptops can be. Other than recreational and functional reasons, laptops have been extremely useful in every class. We use them from foreign language to science and everything in between. We use interactive websites, educational games, and write essays as just a few examples. Using technology prepares us for the real world because in today's day and age in the workforce, technology is the key to success. I would also like to mention the theme for next month, Kindness. The school will be encouraging the students on new ways to treat their friends, family, and teachers with kindness. Here are some more themes for the upcoming months. September, Community. October, Decision-Making, Ethical Dilemmas. November, Thankfulness and Giving Back. December, Kindness, Compassion, Empathy. January, Leadership and Responsibility. February, Diversity and Tolerance. March, Mental and Physical Health and Stress. April, Substance abu Abuse and May, citizenship. Last month, the theme was ethical dilemmas and decision making. Seventh and eighth graders have been putting on skits about ethical dilemmas and decision making for fifth and sixth graders. Having older kids serving as role models is, pr is proving extremely successful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or compliments, contact Gretchen McCoy, the wellness team leader. And finally, we'd like to congratulate the cast and crew of Knights of the Rad Table for a wonderful performance. Are there any questions? Wow. That was a lot of information. It was. That was excellent. Good job. Yes. <laughs> what, what was the theme of the dance? Um, it was blackout, so we encouraged all students to dress in black. Oh, okay. And how did you choose that? Um, we sent an email out to every single eighth grader, and they voted on multiple themes that we provided. So, and that's how you're choosing the next theme? Um, the next team will most likely be chosen by the student council. You want input from the school board? <laughs> <laughs> Not for you. No. <laughs> he wants to have an idea. He wants I'm, to go. I don't have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to take a minute to do what I did last month as well. You two did an excellent job. You had very clear information. Your voices were very clear. It was very easy to hear you. And I want to thank you for that. I think that sets a wonderful example middle school students and so thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you. I do have one question or one follow-up. When, when you come to the resolution about the Gmail situation, <laughs> I'd love to hear about that as the mother of a seventh grader who sees him chatting a bit. <laughs> I'd like to have policy to fall back on. <laughs> Great. Thank, thank you. you. High school. So here's your challenge, guys. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll probably fall short. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, as we talked about last meeting, the first quarter just came to a close, and especially for us seniors, um, between fall sports ending the first quarter and college applications finally kind of coming to an end for some, um, definitely a big sigh of relief for a lot of the school. Um, as far as sports, like I mentioned, all fall sports are now done with the exception of cross country. Um, they've perennially pushed the boundaries of the fall season, so good for them. Um, so as usual, there's probably a two, three week break, depending on which sport ended when, before the VM winter sports, same week as Thanksgiving. Uh, in terms of what the school's doing, um, a lot of excitement about SAC and their new changes, as well as some questions with school board policies, um, with playoffs in the fall. There are definitely some questions about haircuts, so hopefully those can be resolved the next month or two before winter playoffs come around. And then we can take it from there. Um, yeah, not a whole lot to add, but um, first quarter is coming to an end. Um, start of a new quarter, new beginnings. Um, uh, all seasons did end. The boys and girls cross country team uh, came in third and second place respectively in the state meet. They're both qualified to run in New England, so that was highlighted the athletic season, I believe. Um, there are over 50 schools uh, that uh, high school seniors applied to early this year, and that was by the November 1st deadline. And there's still 
no more 15th in line that uh, some students are applying. But that's a pretty substantial number in comparison to the uh, years before. So uh, it's pretty impressive. Um, otherwise, uh, we're just uh, not a whole lot going on since last meeting. But uh, there is one, after, um, one additional thing. I believe Cinderella, the uh, high school play, is uh, getting to a full start this Friday. So um, it's looking to be exciting. And uh, it's been a good year so far. Thank you. Good job. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Rebecca? Yeah. Um, Questions, sorry. Well, it's not really a question, but I wanted to answer a question. I, I thought the issue of high school haircuts was resolved. It's been delegated to the athletic director and the uh, principal involved, and, and we felt that that was a responsibility of them. We trusted them. Um, from what I can tell, it was done appropriately. Having been in Portland, I saw more weird haircuts than I could possibly imagine. And I thought it was done by our athletic director and Jeff Shedd in a, a very appropriate and uh, productive and, uh, manner, which also allowed for the bonding of the, the students. So I thought it was, there is, we have decided, I think, and I think it was decided well and handled well. Thank you. I'll just, I'll just add that um, I think that um, the success probably was reflective of the leadership shown by the students um, on the team you know, who came and spoke to the school board committee. Um, so I really credit them with setting a very good um, tone to the, that tradition, and I hope that other teams will um, respect, be as respectful as, as those students were. Okay. <clears throat> Comments from the public on agenda items. Great. And then recognition, Karen Abbott. Good evening. I'll do a little introduction for Karen. I think you have in your packet the background of the prestigious award that Karen won. It involved not just classroom but professional development and even the, the process for being uh, nominated and selected is pretty rigorous. Uh, just a few remarks for me. I'm sure you're familiar with the terms digital native and digital immigrant, which Gary has used before to describe the generation that is born its technology and used to it and uh, anybody else who's a little bit older has to approach technology as like learning a second language. Karen's kind of in between. I think she's an ambassador. She's comfortable in both worlds, uh, teaching and learning with both populations. A word about the award, or a few words, if energy, enthusiasm, willingness to try new things were the sole criteria for winning, Karen would have won hands down. But she also has the knowledge and technical skill which counted for even more. But to me, the most important thing that Karen embodies is the ability to reach out to kids and to colleagues to give them an irresistible invitation to join in the fun. Um, also, I'd just like to take a moment to thank you, the school board, the town, CIF, PCPA for the uh, financial support to get this done. We can't have technology without the toys. I think Karen wants to say a few words. Well, thank you very much for um, having me here tonight. And um, one of the, as I was listening tonight to the two middle school students, um, it was clear where my path is. And certainly um, what I'm doing with the kids and with my colleagues is leading them in the direction um, of where the middle school students are heading and the high school students. She was talking about, I think it was Eva, I'm not sure, was talking about how uh, they were using, you asked the question about um, how did you choose the theme? And they said email. And I thought, ah, here we go. This is starting off the whole night. Um, but it's also, the, you know, they were talking about their laptops. They were talking about everything they were doing with technology. And sometimes it, it feels like uh, it, people are a little resistant to change and they want to know why do we need to have these tools in the classroom and you have teachers, you have whiteboards, you have all those wonderful things, but they are just an amazing tool to have to bring the lessons home to the kids and that's what I always go back to is thinking about um, how can I bring this lesson home to the kids so they really can understand what's going on and the technology that we've got in our schools right now 
is allowing us to do that. And we've just had this huge, wonderful gift that we've had this last two years, thanks to CIF and the PCPA in our district, but especially like um, being able to um, have this in the classrooms has certainly made a huge change in the way we're teaching in our school. Um, and Tom sounded, it sounded wonderful, but I kept thinking to myself that when I first heard Shari had nominated me, I said, no, 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 I'm not ready yet. I haven't done enough. Um, and I'm just not quite ready. Give me another year. Then, then I'll think about it. And she went ahead and did it anyway. And so I ended up, um, I won, and I was quite excited. I'm still excited. Uh, I started, uh, I sat with Gary today and made our shopping list so I can find some things for the classroom. I'm going to be do some podcasting, and I'm happy to do some Skyping, so that'll be a lot of fun. I think the kids will really get into that. They love seeing themselves up on the screen, um, on the smart boards, and they love hearing themselves talk, which is even more important to them sometimes. <laughs> um, so those are some of the things that um, I've got planned. I can't wait. Um, I see a lot of myself and some of the children that I'm teaching. I used to be a very shy person. A lot of people can't believe that of me, but I was very shy. Didn't want to um, be in the front of the classroom, always chose the back, never raised my hand. And I see that in a lot of kids, and that's something that I can identify with. And using the tools that we have pulls out pieces in kids you never knew were in there. I had a student last year, and his mother kept telling me, are you sure you're talking about my son? He's always like right up in front and joking around. And I said, no, no, he's really quiet. And then I did Reader's Theater. And once they got up there and started to perform, this child, it was like a director. And an actor came out in him. And at the very end, he went, and that's it. Cut. And it was just, it was just the cutest thing. And I just looked at him and went, oh. This is the child that I hadn't seen before. So you, you get to see pieces of children you really may not have otherwise have seen. Um, I think that one of the other huge things that have come out of this is what I called, you've seen the movie Pay It Forward, and I talked about this at, at the Acton Conference, but the Pay It Forward, um, I see what you have done, see from the PCPA, um, has done for our schools with technology, and I see where it's going. I'm helping by teaching other teachers and by using the tools in the school, but I'm looking at where the children that I'm teaching are going. As I started to say in the beginning, I'm watching where they're going, and I know where the children are in middle school. I went to my daughter's college graduation, and the amount of technology that they are using blew my mind away. And she was talking about the presentations they're required to do in college now, all of it technologically based. So really starting them off in first grade and kindergarten, it's an important piece just to continue that down the road. So I do want to thank you all so very much um, for this um, tonight and again to Actum and um, to my administration who has been very supportive and encouraging and to the colleagues that I work with because they have been very obviously very supportive and put up with me. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have anything one, uh, to one postscript. Karen is na uh, now eligible for a national award oh. as a main representative. We found that out from our inside information at Actum. Fabulous. Well, I'll just say that as a self-professed Luddite, um, I actually find myself on Facebook occasionally, and somewhere the fact that you won this award has popped up, and the um, reactions from citizens in this town were gleeful and celebratory and um, resoundingly, oh my gosh, she's terrific. Oh, my, my children, Heather, she's wonderful. Um, so uh, it's wonderful that you are bringing technology um, into these children's world, um, but it's equally wonderful that you're doing it in a way that's impactful and making a big difference in their lives as a teacher. So thank you. I don't use Facebook as much. I'm sorry. But I, I did want to add a compliment to Karen. Um, my son did have her, and I know she's an excellent teacher and, and uh, did a wonderful job with my son. And I think this is just a small recognition of the many skills and talents she's brought to our, our school. And I really appreciate what you've done. John? 
uh, I want to congratulate you also, but and particularly emphasize and thank you for the professional development work that you and Eric and, and Tim have done, uh, because I think it's so important when this, we, we, we do have the benefit of all this great new technology in Pong Cove, and, and, um, but it's so important that people understand how to use those tools, and, and, and y you, the three of you, have been leaders in, in learning how to use it and, and sharing that knowledge with, with uh, the rest of the faculty, and I think that's very important. So thank you. I don't think you're quite you know, where you said that Bert was headed when he came to me one day and said, so Ken, do you think you'd like a smart board? I'd just like to speak to her for a moment, too. I had the opportunity to be at the banquet the night that they got the award. And uh, I, was, I would say to you, above and beyond everything that Karen has done, just to hear the words that were said. Shari did an amazing job presenting Karen and what she was doing. And Karen did, was, was just amazing. We heard several people get awards. I was also there because two people from my former district were being also get awards that night. But I listened to Karen and I listened to Shari, and they stood out above everyone else as far as their enthusiasm, their understanding, their commitment to children, their commitment to technology. And I, can, I can't tell you how very proud I was to be there, to hear what they had to say and how they did it. So I thank them very much as well. Shari, Shari, Shari as you know, is a wonderful person as far as getting everybody going. And uh, then Karen got up and she just did such a wonderful job, including uh, helping make sure that the people understood what her husband's position was in this, which I thought was quite interesting. So I, I really appreciate all that you did and, and are doing for the kids in Cape Elizabeth. Okay, um, so we're moving on to Seif. Claire is here to update the board and the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. Hi, everyone. Now we've just had a full cycle, and I can say that it was drastically different from spring. Spring we had, I think, 23 applicants, and this cycle we had 12. So I'm not sure whether that's a reflection on what's going on within the budget system or where it fell with teacher conferences, but from a logistical point of view, it was definitely a far more civilized round of grants um, as we debated this cycle. We've given a total of $23,340 this cycle. Um, given that we've just been talking about technology, I'll go straight to the middle school grant for fifth grade technology, which is a bit of a trickle-on effect of the snowball of, of what's been happening in Pong Cove, really. Um, some of the teachers came to us and said, we have students that are coming from Pong Cove and they're used to all this great technology and they arrive in fifth grade, and some of the teachers have some, but a lot of us don't. We had some particularly savvy teachers who would be able to use it with minimal training and didn't have the technology and would love to have it. And again, C found ourselves in a quandary, having said that we're really trying to step back. We feel we've seeded this, but this spoke to us um, mainly because we felt that the teachers who were asking us really wanted it. it. It wasn't just a case of, okay, now every grade has to have some technology. They really needed it. And then it left us with, you can't have some teachers with some technology because not all of us have Karen Abbott as our teachers. And to even it out to make it fair, we felt that we would equip the entire fifth grade with whatever they needed to remain and round it out. So subject to all those teachers getting the teacher training that they need. I know some have been sneaking over to uh, Karen's presentations in Ponco, um, but hopefully Steve has assured us that they will get their teacher training and that will all be up and running very quickly. Ponco came to us for um, a professional development for teachers in liter literacy support for struggling learners. Now this piggybacks on um, two phenomenal women who the district paid for to come in to Pond Cove and help um, deal with literacy from the top down. They've had such an amazing impact that they came to see to say, is there any possibility that we could get extra time with these individuals to talk to every member of staff, to give them tools to bring into the classroom um, that will directly help all students. And again, in partnering with the district, 
a lot of people feel that literacy is such a core subject, why is Eve getting involved with it? But we felt that the district had shown good faith and brought them in and that it was a sign of their success that we were taking it that little bit further and enabling these individuals to come into the classroom and carry it on. Then we have in um, high school, we have um, storytelling performance of Homer's Odyssey. Um, a, a storyteller will come to the high school to or, orally perform Homer's Odyssey to sophomores. I can say, having done a little bit of it in Latin, I think this will do leaps and bounds to bring it to life for students. Um, this is happening in December and I think will be open to members of the public because it's in the auditorium. So. Lisa said that there would be plenty of room for that. There is also Jimmy Higgins, A Life in the Labor Movement, funds to bring in a one-man show to the high school. It tells the story of a reporter who covered historical events. It will be presented to junior seniors and residents of village crossings, some of whom lived during these times, so it's gonna be a nice community event to share historical perspectives and bring some of that to life for students. Um, we also have bookmaking with art paste papers back in middle school. We have a targeted giving proportion available in SEEF and our arts enrichment. This spoke to some of that targeted giving funds. And then we had the Pyramid Response to Intervention Workshop, which was a joint grant between middle school and high school. And as Alan spoke to us about how the effect of that has been helping within the school systems. We felt that this was an integral part to deal with those students that are really falling again outside on those peripheries and trying to bring them back in and make it a mainstream cycle. So, any questions? Thank you. If I if you can't have one minute. <laughs> Uh, recognizing the fact that this may be my last time to publicly say something about SEAF, I would like to say very clearly, I've been here for five and a half years. Uh, I have had a wonderful relationship with SEAF over that five and a half years. I think we've each learned from each other. And I want to publicly say how much I have appreciated the work that SEAF has done over the five and a half years for the students of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, my goal has always been, what can we do that will enhance the education of our young people? And I think SEAF, as an organization, has provided that leadership and provided it well. Whether it be through the grants or the other possibilities that happen in the town of Cape Elizabeth. So I just want to say publicly, a thank you to all of you as I leave here. Uh, the, I will always remember the fine work that has been done by SEAF for the children of Cape Elizabeth. And I thank you so much. On behalf of SEAF, thank you. Okay, so, um, back under recognition, 5B High School Government Class Candidates Night. Unfortunately, uh, Jeff Shedd cannot be here tonight because, as you know, we have a speaker here at uh, high school, I think, who uh, is, is speaking about the uh, sports activities, and so he was unable to be here. I don't have a lot of information because I didn't attend this. But I would say to you right up front that, first of all, I want to thank Ted Jordan, who has provided so much leadership in the area of social studies and in the area of getting students really involved with everything that goes on in the community. Uh, I look at it from the grant he just got on the Depression. He did a wonderful job uh, a couple of years ago with uh, people who had worked on the Liberty ship, uh, ships in South Portland. But he has, for the last several years, also led students in doing interviews. Uh, I call it interviews because I don't really call it a debate, but doing interviews with those candidates who are running for both school board and, and town council. And so I'm, I think Ted and his students deserve a great deal of thanks for the work they have done and to see young people providing leadership in this area. Yeah. Any other comments? I'll just say that um, I did happen to watch um, some of those evenings, and as always, the students were incredibly um, poised and professional in demeanor and well prepared. Um, and as someone who had to participate on several occasions, um, it was always a pleasure to to uh, work with them and, and answer their probative questions. Um, and they're providing an amazing service to this town. Uh, 
it's a, it's a great way for people to get to know the candidates. And um, I'm very appreciative of the time and the effort that those classes and Ted Jordan put into it. So um, thank you to everybody who um, participated in those evenings. OK, five C's, transitions, and I have no idea. Um, do you want me to go to the podium? Sure. Okay. This was not the agenda. No, it's not. You can't get there from here. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> she doesn't need that. No. She's tough as nails. She's tough as nails. <laughs> Um, I'm here to um, talk about Rebecca. Um, when Alan asked me to say a few words about her, I was delighted. Having been among those who pushed Rebecca to run in 2004, it's my honor, really, to get a chance to publicly thank you, Rebecca, for your six and a half years of service um, to, the school, to the schools and to the community and to the children of Cape Elizabeth. Um, when I asked a few former school board members to describe you, the words dedicated, brilliant, determined, courageous, hardworking, and passionate were superlatives that I heard over and over again. Um, and they're attributes that make up who you are as a leader and a community member and a friend. Uh, Rebecca joined the board on the heels of assisting the town secure two necessary building renovation bonds the prior year. Although her children were in preschool at the time, um, Rebecca was determined that the high school would have its necessary updates and that the ground would be broken for the kindergarten edition because it was important for the educational well-being of Cape Elizabeth. And she worked tirelessly to that end, even spending some weekends going door to door. And though she has served as chairwoman of the board this year, I'm fairly certain that she served on almost every committee at one time or another, except maybe the turf committee, because I know she's not a big football fan, but we won't hold that against her. Um, most notable, I think, has been her work as finance chair. Her unfaltering approach to the budget process year after year has been extremely detailed and informative. And while she has many strengths, her ability to understand and communicate the complex issues around budget and funding have been a gift to the board, the council, and this community. It is a little known fact that Rebecca is one of a small handful of Cape citizens who actually understand the state's EPS school funding formula. So determined was she to grasp the intricacies, or some might call them absurdities, of this formula that upon facing a substantial shortfall in state funding, Rebecca organized a trip for herself, Alan, and various other elected officials, along, I have heard, with her dog, Wags, to carpool up to Augusta and sit down for almost two hours with the director of finance at the DOE until there was a reasonable understanding of the formula and its potential impact for our district in the coming years. I think by the end, thanks to Rebecca's persistence, even the dog wags had a slight grasp of EPS funding. But understanding does not mean appreciating, so she continued to fight when she came home, um, even forming a committee, a curtailment committee, and building a coalition of our peer communities um, to share information and resources. Rebecca has undoubtedly served some of the most politically, or during some of the most politically and financially challenging times to date. Um, Pulaski, Tabor, curtailments, and a locally imposed tax cap were the issues that required attention, focus, and flexibility year to year. More than once, I'm sure, Rebecca was overcome by frustration by the constant threats leveled at education funding. In fact, it was about a year and a half ago, she was so deeply disturbed by the fact that budget shortfalls had continually delayed the middle school's textbook replacement schedule that in 2009, Rebecca spearheaded an effort to raise $60,000 for necessary middle school textbooks. This she did professionally, effectively, and rather quickly. It took only a matter of months before the middle school could order updated textbooks for their students. 
In addition to her financial prowess, her interest in curriculum, in particular her work on the CIA team and the Teaching and Learning Committee, has been a tremendous asset to this district. Some of you may know that Rebecca's father is a math professor in the University of California, Santa Barbara. So Rebecca carries the DNA of not only a master mathematician, but a lifelong educator. And her innate understanding of education and process contributed to her clarity of purpose and thinking during the evolution of the Teaching and Learning Committee, particularly how to best report and present information. As the legislative liaison for the school board, Rebecca was tireless in her efforts to win consolidation exemption for Cape Elizabeth, something that has allowed us to remain independent and to continue to chart our own course for education. It's important to note that we are only one of three districts in the state to be granted such an exemption. Lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Rebecca's major contribution to science and education. Dispelling the myth that many of us were told by our mothers, if you roll your eyes too many times, they'll stay <laughs> stuck in the back of your head. Perhaps it's that supplemental hit of oxygen with the sigh of frustration that accompanies her eye roll that loosens the eyes in the socket, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Regardless, rest assured that any of us who have worked with this brilliant leader has been subject to one or many of her eye rolls and heavy sighs and have likely shuddered at them. So we thank you for your many attempts to control a reaction to what appears to be almost parasympathetic in nature. But we realize that even in your moments of deepest frustration, you are still good-natured and kind-hearted. So Rebecca, on behalf of this board and boards past, I want to thank you for the gift of giving us six and a half years of your adult life and for sharing your many, many talents and passions. The children of Cape Elizabeth and this community have been fortunate indeed, and you will be greatly missed, but we know where to find you. So, our Luddite friend, don't stray too far from your landline. We'll give you a call because we know you don't know how to text. <laughs> Best of luck, and thank you. Oh, thank you, Mary. It's very kind. <laughs> probably should mention that Rebecca had requested not to receive a gift tonight, but that yes. money would be put towards the deficit yes. for next year <laughs> from the school board. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so also leaving the, the school board uh, as of next month is Linda Winker. Um, and it's been an honor for me to, to work with Linda, who brings a serious commitment uh, and a ready laugh to her board service. Um, and it's my privilege to, to read some words of thanks from Kathy Ray, who's unable to attend tonight's meeting, um, which are on the next page. <laughs> <laughs> Linda is a lifelong resident of Cape Elizabeth, having been educated at the Cape schools, and is knowledgeable and committed to the community. When she ran for school board in 2005, she made it clear that she would represent all voters of Cape Elizabeth and not just special interest groups. Her approach, approach to the budget was to ensure proper funding for the schools while keeping a balance with the taxpayers. As a school board member, I was continually impressed with her knowledge of the issues that confront our academic community and the passion she showed in discussing them. She was an active listener to both sides of an argument and is an exceptional communicator a rare quality in today's politically charged environment. Linda's candor and common sense approach to the issues was a refreshing addition to the board. She worked hard to ensure that high quality education professionals and the facilities required to support them were in place. Linda has served as vice chair of the board, chair of human resources, chair of policy, member of finance committee, chair of extracurricular, school board representative on the turf committee, <laughs> that <went along. laughs> and school board representative on technology plan committee. The Cape school system is better off today for all students because of Linda's service. Please join me in thanking her. Thank you, John. Thank you.
There is a. Yes. And there is. Oh, no, I have to get a hand. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank you both, and I'd like to thank the speakers as well for doing such wonderful presentations tonight. Thank you very much. Did you want to go ahead and go? I'll go first because I know Rebecca always likes to go last. <laughs> but first of all, I'd like to thank John for your kind words. I certainly appreciate them. And over the past few weeks, I've given quite a lot of consideration to just what I wanted to say this evening. And I really found it difficult to find the words that would adequately express just what this experience has truly meant to me. You see, I joined the Cape Elizabeth School Board shortly after returning to my hometown of Cape Elizabeth with my family. I felt it was time, my time to give something back to the community that had given so much to me throughout my lifetime. Once elected, I quickly found out that the business of public education is far more complex than I could ever, ever have imagined. Luckily, I had the pleasure of working with some of the most engaging and intelligent people that I've ever met. Tonight, I'd like to pay tribute to those individuals, to Alan Hawkins, as well as all of the district leadership team, most of them here tonight, Jeff Shedd, Jeff Thorak, Janet, Steve Conley, Tom Eismeyer, Dominic DePatsy, as well as all of the teachers, the support staff, the maintenance staff, food services staff, and also all of the health professionals that we have here in our district. I want to thank all of you for being so patient with me, especially when you could have easily dismissed any of my concerns, for being a mentor to me when I needed your expertise and your knowledge, for being a friend when I needed your support, and for being a colleague when we did indeed need to get some work done. To Pauline, Andrea, all of the office staff and personnel, I want to thank you for providing the guidance and support that I, as a board member, needed to accomplish some of that work. To our students, parents, the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, the town council, I also want to thank all of you for your continuing support of not only the school board, but our school district and our town. I consider it both a privilege and an honor to have been involved with the board. Together, collectively, we have seen some amazing things happen. Visions have been created. Goals were structured and aspirations that started out as ideals, more often than not, became tangible realities. This has been a life-changing experience for me, and affirming, a life-changing and affirming experience for me. And as I look back on my time here, I see it as time well spent and also a time with very few regrets. So again, thank you. Thank you. Okay. That, that was very, very eloquent. I couldn't <clears throat> sit down and prepare something. I think I'm still kind of in denial um, that this is coming to an end. But it has been an amazing experience. I treasure um, all the years and all the people that I worked with. I come away with a huge amount of respect for um, all the educators in our system, the passion, dedication, commitment. Um, enthusiasm, optimism, it's boundless. And um, I feel very, very honored to have had a chance to work with all of you. Um, and I feel especially lucky that I live in this town, that my children can go to these schools and enjoy these teachers. Um, and I just con I consider this just uh, the end of this particular phase of supporting the educational system in Cape Elizabeth and in the state of Maine. And, maybe even nationally, um, but I will be there um, to cheer you on and support you in any way that I can. Um, and I won't be there to uh, roll my eyes at you anymore <laughs> or flick my hair, apparently. That was another one of my favorites. Or bring my glasses down. Don't uh, forget uh, sighing. <laughs> the sighs. Tapping things. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I... <laughs> I appreciate your patience. I appreciate my colleagues' patience. Um, and I wish this um, board members who are continuing and the new board members who are coming on board the, the best of luck. Um, you guys are still going to be facing a huge amount of challenge. I wish I could say it were otherwise. Um, but like I said, I, I will be there as a parent and as a citizen to um, 
offer my support in any way that I can to, to the district. So thank you, and thank you, Mary, for your kind words. Oh, and by the way, I am a football fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on to athletics. Jeff, how appropriate. <laughs> um, I just wanted to provide the community and the school board just a snippet of our uh, fall athletic season. And uh, as always, I, our teams have started off on a successful note. Um, not only the teams, but our, our programs and uh, the good stuff that's going on in, in uh, athletics in, in Cape Elizabeth. Um, Really, uh, the Hannaford Field Concession Shed has just been a, a wonderful uh, addition to uh, our fundraising. Uh, boosters have really seen it as a lucrative piece, and uh, um, I think the spectators also enjoy having a nice dinner um, for those 6 o'clock games. The one thing that I've been really uh, proud of has been our community involvement of our student-athletes. Uh, Everything from our Saturday morning programs and their involvement with that, um, they've just done each year, it just gets better and better, and uh, just so pleased with uh, the role modeling, and uh, those, the youngsters really look up to the, to the uh, high school students, and uh, just a great connection, so really pleased with that. Uh, the senior to senior program, right, we had 25 uh, student athletes participating, they ended up cleaning uh, 14 homes, uh, so that was terrific. And we will be uh, recognizing our student athletes, captains, um, and some of our leaders in the SAC will be uh, recognizing the fire and rescue for an appreciation for uh, the work that they've been doing. So just terrific community involvement. Uh, had an excellent presentation today by John Underwood. Uh, he uh, met with the coaches and uh, had an all-school assembly. And uh, his theme was the life, in a, life of an athlete. And uh, he'll be meeting uh, this evening uh, at St. Bartholomew's with uh, community, med community members and parents. Uh, another successful fall spirit week, uh, really trying to uh, improve school climate, school spirit. And uh, that continues to grow and, and to be a success. Uh, we've really we've implemented the uh, concussion impact test. And uh, I think. Surrounding schools now are looking to Cape Elizabeth for uh, guidance on not just what we're doing on the field, but in the classroom as well. So I think we've really taken a, a lead there, and it's a uh, really proud of that. And uh, kudos to uh, Lisa and Tatiana for all of their hard work. They ended up baselining 300. I think they baselined 300 students to date. So uh, that's a lot of time and a lot of work, but very important. And I'd like to uh, commend our. Uh, senior class and, and, and especially Ben Berman for taking on our super fan club another uh, way of trying to improve um, school spirit and uh, and taking on an appropriate uh, role in being a student spectator so uh, those guys have just done a tremendous job and um, keep up the good work then some athletic so where we are in, in playoffs, uh, as we have mentioned, we've had uh, volleyball has finished her third varsity uh, season, or third season as a varsity sport, uh, with 50 girls participating. So that's, uh, that's unbelievable for three years. It's one of actually the highest uh, participation rates for, for all of our sports. Uh, cross country, as uh, Reed had mentioned, will be competing in New England, and uh, Reed will be one of the uh, members uh, running in that race. Uh, our football team entered our semifinals in a three-way coin toss and brought the uh, lucky coin. So. <laughs> um, our golf team finished seventh uh, at States, and uh, congratulations to Willow Prod for finishing fourth as an individual. Um, field hockey returned to the playoffs uh, with a very exciting quarterfinal game with Greeley. Our boys soccer team had an outstanding performance. Um, in a semifinal game at Portland last Saturday. And our girls' soccer team hosted Deering in a prelim and then played, uh, ended up having to see uh, the, the, fe or the state championship, the state champion, Scarborough. Um, and Scarborough had allowed only one goal the entire season. So that was a tough task, but uh, really represented the school nicely. A few honors. Um, our girls' soccer team, once again, was uh, 
recognized for their, uh, by the NSCAA uh, for the all-academic team. Uh, we had 24 Western Maine Conference All-Stars and 28 uh, Western Maine Conference Senior Scholar Athletes. And uh, to qualify for that, you have to have a GPA of a 93 or greater. So uh, that's just outstanding. I mean, it, by far, um, Western Maine, as far as Western Maine Conference schools, I think we really, if not doubled, I think what other schools were, were uh, reporting. So that was, that's just uh, terrific. And then soon, uh, coach association and all, site, and all state teams will be released um, in the near future. So we should be getting some of that information shortly. And as far as numbers are go, numbers, uh, participation in the middle school is right on par. I think we're about 10 students less than where we were last year at the high school. So we were about 166 uh, this year. And at the high school, uh, we were about 279. Um, and last fall at this time, we were 266. So that, that uh, that rate for this fall is about 51% of our students. Um, when you start factoring in winter and spring, that number grows to about 72%. So, uh, as always, that participation number is, is uh, very impressive. And I do have sort of a breakdown of our fall numbers that you take a look at. Uh, winter season, believe it or not, today was the uh, first day of girls ice hockey. Uh, so their, their season's underway. Basketball, boys ice hockey, indoor track, swimming and diving, they'll start Monday, November 22nd. And then Alpine and Nordic, uh, Monday, December 6th. And uh, as always, all athletic schedules are uh, on the website. And that's for middle school and high school as well. And then uh, finally, I'd like to uh, congratulate and thank uh, Rebecca and Linda for their leadership uh, on the school board and uh, for your support of the schools and, and our programs. And uh, you'll be greatly missed and wish you well. And back in the citizen role and a little more free time, I'm sure. So uh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And that was it. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Jeff? Thank you so much. I hope you get a couple of days of rest before the next season. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next is AYP update. Ah, uh, yes, we have received letters, and you have letters in your packet about uh, adequate yearly progress. I did ask the pre three principals to do a brief presentation. Jeff is not here tonight, so I'll mention his. But uh, I'm going to have Steve and uh, Tom talk about uh, their AYP status. Uh, this is, I will say to you, this is a fairly short report just to give you an update on where we are at this point in time. Just a little bit of an overview of how the like crash course in AYP. Uh, this first sheet, main AYP targets, comes from the state directly and there are several categories on here. For instance, in the upper left, you have uh, reading, and it gives the percentiles of students that have to meet or exceed standards in grades three through eight in the high school. The next set of columns over to the far right talk about additional indicators, which is average daily attendance and the numbers that you have to hit there in a school. Uh, bottom left is math statistics for the, uh, uh, math percentages that have to be met targets in grades three through eight and the high school as well as the graduation rates so these are all this is all information that's been set according to in Maine's approach to meeting uh, no child left behind regulations so as I talk uh, about uh, PowerPoint that this is brief it's only got four slides to it but um, the information on that chart let's not put that there will I have a paper copy of that as well. I'll apologize if there's a typo on the front of this, so just adequately, please drop off the L on it. It's not adequately yearly. This 
is the so this here, this is the number we have to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, adequate yearly progress. So exactly what is it? First of all, adequate yearly pro progress is a requirement of no child left behind. And there are several factors that are considered for you know, for a school to make KYP. Factor number one is that you must have a participation rate is considered, and for the year 2010, you have to have a minimum participation rate uh, of students who take the kneecap testing of 92%. At Cape Elizabeth in the middle school, we had 100%. Um, that's an unusual statistic. You have kids who need to take the kneecap test or students who are, have severe cognitive delays um, may take a different approach called the Personalized Alternative Assessment Portfolio, or PAPES. And that's uh, not a test situation. It is done through a, uh, established goals in an IEP meeting during the uh, special education process. And it culminates with um, reviewing those goals and submitting information to the state. And we do get scores back on those portfolios. Uh, second factor is average daily attendance. So um, in grades three through eight, for instance, if you're required to have a minimum daily attendance of 93%, the middle school, for example, is at 96%. The graduation rate for the state is 83, while Cape Elizabeth High School had a graduation rate in 2010 of 96.7. And the fourth factor is academic progress. And you get two scores that count towards AYP. We do take a science section as well, but at this time that is not included and there is no intention for that to be included in the AYP determination. So you have uh, the reading score and uh, the state requirement is that 66% of the students across the school must meet uh, or exceed the standards. And at the middle school we had 87% either exceed for the reading and in the math, you had a requirement of 60% and we had 83% uh, get over the bar on that exam. Now, there is a, a breakout piece to the academic progress and those are subgroups. We had uh, three subgroups in 2008-9, one of them being Asian Pacific Islander but we did not have a subgroup for that in 2009-10. The way that works is you have to have, over a two-year time period, a minimum of 20 scores over two years in order to count that as a subgroup. So in 2007, 8, 8, 9, we had that as a subgroup, but not continuing into 2009-10, so that's not applicable. There is um, the economically disadvantaged category, um, you need a minimum of 63% uh, meets the standard, and it was really 66%, and we met that with our economically disadvantaged group because we actually had a score of 63, and there is a confidence interval that's included in, in how the, the metrics of this works, and so our score after the confidence interval was a 66, so we were right on target. Um, students with disabilities, referred to as the Identified Disability Subgroup, you have to have a minimum of 63 there as well. Uh, we did not make it in that particular group, and we'll show you how that works out. Um, those scores for the students with disabilities, the Identified Disability Subgroup, also include the PAPES. Um, now, let's say, for instance, that one of those categories does not make the state number for instance, our identified disability. Then they go to a section called Safe Harbor, where you look at the scores and you try to figure out what was the percentage of students that you had the previous year who met or exceeded the standards, and what's your percent the following year. If you have a minimum 10% gain, then you um, are given Safe Harbor. So in uh, math, for identified disability subgroup, we are pending safe harbor, which means that our students made that 10% gain. In reading, we did not have the 10% gain this past year um, for that particular subgroup. And here's a breakout of information about that. 2008-9, uh, the state target to uh, meet the standards was 50%. 
we have a percentage of 38% and we may save poverty. Now that's not the 50% that you're looking at. Uh, there were no uh, groups in the state in special education that made that 50% target. Um, but we did make safe harbor because compared to the year before we made our 10% gain. In reading, you see that uh, we had the state target was 58%. We didn't make it there, we had 47%, so we, we made safe harbor. But here's an interesting statistic on that is that there is no school that had a higher score, a uh, higher percentage of students with identified disabilities meeting or exceeding the standards in Maine. Um, 2009, which is a great statistic, <laughs> but the problem is the next year it's going to get even more interesting. So, uh, in 2009-10, you'll notice a significant drop in the number of students. Uh, in 8 9, we had 24 out of 64 um, make the math cut, and the next year it was 15 out of 43. And I'll get to that in the next slide as to why the numbers are so disparate. Um, we did not make, uh, we did make safe harbor, uh, believe it or not, and due to this 95% confidence interval. Uh, in reading, though, we did not make the safe harbor. Even though the statistics are identical, it was because of the year before in reading with that 47%. Here are some interesting facts to consider about the testing. The two tests that we used to determine uh, AYP, in 2008-9, you may recall the students took the MEAs in, in the spring. In 2009-10, students took the NECAP test in the fall. So we had five months to demonstrate adequate yearly progress. And some of those months were not the best educational months. June, July, and August tend to lag a little bit in classrooms. Um, so, 2008-9, um, the numbers reflect four classes because they took the MEA at the end of the year in March. So that was 5th grade, 6th grade, 7th grade, and 8th grade. The MEA demonstrated their progress in their grades that year that they took the test. The next year, when the NECAP started, that occurred in the fall, in October. So when you take the test, it refers to the teaching that happened the year before. So our current fifth grade scores are part of the fourth grade, they're part of Pond Cove. So we didn't have the same pool of 64 students to refer to for that one change over year, which made it very difficult for us to have the comparative statistics that we needed. Um, let's see, the adequate yearly progress, you can see that in, in uh, and it's also on the chart, in reading it increased from 58 to 66 percent, while math increased from 50 to 60 percent. I'm always fascinated by that 10 point change. If I didn't make the 10 point there, how am I going to make it for safe harbor? But I won't get into that. I, I was up to Augusta talking with George Tucker Friday saying, exactly how would someone make safe harbor if they missed that score? We were both kind of wondering about that. Uh, Title I authorization, uh, according to the uh, No Child Left Behind regulations, is going to have to be reauthorized because if you look at the chart I handed you, by the year 2013-14, no school in the state could possibly, is going to hit 100% in reading and math. As a matter of fact, there are only five schools with numbers more than 8, 9, 10 in a class that um, did make standards. And we were one of those with our math scores. So there are also no extra points awarded for proficient with distinction, which is the highest category you can, uh, that you can test to. And that's an interesting anomaly in, in comparison to a lot of other tests that students could take. Um, the paper, those scores that students received were actually not their real scores. This is a because the paint goes for an entire year, the notebook isn't turned in. So when we turned in our papes last year, it was way past October when the student scores went in and were calculated by January. The notebooks hadn't even gone in. So what they did was they took the previous scores from the year before and just applied them over. I enjoy this. 
uh, test results compared with different groups of students. Um, we had a total of uh, 27 different students who did not take the test in both years. Incoming students, students who left the school, and a couple of changes uh, on, in transition in between the years, students uh, not qualifying, uh, getting uh, released from special education, for instance, or picked up. So a changeover of 27 students out of 64 in the first group. So you see that there are a lot of uh, really interesting factors that the state was driven to have a requirement for AYP according to NCLB. How are those initials going? Yeah. Then um, that's caught a lot of schools in this situation. So we know that uh, the Common Core National Assessments are going to be scheduled for 2013-2014. The NECAP's going to be discontinued. Um, but there's a company called Smarter Balance that's a collaboration between uh, NC, the uh, NWEA folks, measured progress from the NECAPs, and Pearson, who is one of the big psychometric organizations in, in connected to education. So we'll see a test that looks very similar to the NWEAs that'll be self-adjusting within the test. It'll be technologically driven, and it will happen as much as three times a year for students that are selected. There'll be a universal screening piece in the fall, and then the schools determine what happens after that. So, um, overall, we're very pleased with the uh, most of the indicators that we have. Dom DePassi, Cheryl Joyce, and I have talked um, with, with staffs about what does this data mean to us as far as our reading scores go. We're not actually focusing on that piece because our NWEAs and the, and the uh, common probes that we use in our school are giving us much more reliable and consistent data on one student to that same student for next year. So, what kind of questions? <laughs> what does it all mean? <laughs> uh, it would mean if we were a Title I school, if Cape Elizabeth Middle School received funds for Title I, we would be on year one. They changed the titles, but it's it's something like uh, you're on a uh, you, you you're notified that you did not make a adequate daily progress. If that happened a second year in a row, because when one group doesn't make it, it doesn't matter what group, even though your entire school made it, that's uh, the whole school score. If that one group didn't, then your school does not make AYP. Um, if there's a second year in a row, it's considered a needs improvement school. If there's a third year in a row, it's a school improvement plan, a SIPs school. And we've seen the list of those come out in the state in the last year or so. Um, if we were Title I, they could restrict funds. If we were um, Title I, they could also bring funds. When I was at Portland High School, George came down from Augusta and met with me and brought a $70,000 check to help me figure it out. Nobody handed me a $70,000 check the other day. Okay. Um, I guess in thinking about the, the testing that we changed, the administration and Alan expected these results not to. We, did you ex expect these results? We did. We got a preliminary, sort of expected them. We got a preliminary report uh, back in the spring that said we were not going to make uh, AYP or Safe Harbor in math, but we were going to make it in reading. But we didn't, get the, we didn't have the student pieces to figure that out. So I was surprised by that because I thought, wait a minute, we had that 47% the year before in reading. How did we do that? And then when the information actually, when I got the information, the letter in uh, October 5th or 6th or something like that, it was reversed, which made more sense. Any other questions? David? Ooh, um, besides being completely confused by this, um, what happens if you don't, since we're not a Title I school, what happens when we don't make a safe harbor? Do we get penalized? No. Do we get more money? No. It's we're not going to get penalized <laughs> funds, and we're not going to get, we're not going to be offered an opportunity through a financial backing to uh, make any kinds of changes. And in reality, as I've indicated, that we're not, we're not thinking that we need to be making a lot of changes compared to the information that we received from this. I think the programming pieces that we have in place for reading through our 
um, instructional support program, I think they're, they're outstanding. So I think the test that's, one of the really difficult parts is, I get all this information after um, the, the second day students started testing this year. There was not a thing I could do in advance of that to say, now that I have this information, how will it impact what we're going to be doing for these kids this year as they test? Whoops, they're testing. So it was all, you, know, you have to rely on other data points. If I may, David, what you're experiencing um, is the realization that a national system has been designed to fail every public school in this nation. Well, and I came to that conclusion. But. Yeah. Um, and so the question is, continually year after year, is anyone paying attention? Is anyone concerned that there is a national law on the books that's going to fail every single public school in the nation? Because no school, this, is just, this, this law says by 2013, 13, 13, 13, right? 100% uh, of all students must meet, um, meet the standards. Mm -hmm. M must meet or exceed the standards. Meet or exceed, 100%. All groups, all students. Um, and there's no, I don't believe there's going to be any school, private or public, frankly, but the, surprise, surprise, the private schools aren't held to any accountability. Um, there's no public school out there that's going to be able to show those, those kind of um, statistics. It's so I'm going to hit a little earlier because the 2012-13 says it's, um, a lot of schools won't even make the average daily attendance at 95%. Uh, then the reading is 92% and the math is 90%. There are only <coughs> two or three schools in the state that can flirt with those numbers anyways. But theoretically, if you do not make progress over three years, I believe you are required to have um, vouchers um, and, and allow families to choose where they go to school. Um, so there's some question about what was the motivation behind this law, I believe, in the first place. But anyways, um, that's a whole other topic. And that regulation would apply more towards schools that have multiple facilities. For instance, if I was in South Portland, let's say I was at Memorial, and the Memorial didn't make it, and Mahoney did, that especially because it's a Title I receiver, parents would be notified that the school didn't make it and they have the option to select the other school even if they're not in that part of the town. Right. Thank you, Steve. Any, any other questions? Okay. Thanks. We're going to go, do, do you want to go to the other ones? I, mean, uh, I think Tom huh? is going to speak about what Tom called. I could say we made it and then sit down. But, uh, <laughs> Last year, I mean, the inevitable happened. Ponco, AARP, and the one uh, subcategory that we have, and that's uh, students with disabilities, and it was in math. But this year, we're off again. But everything you're saying is true. Everybody has to get on that list eventually. I'm not defending NCLB. It's a matter of uh, good intentions gone awry. It's turned into a, a very blunt instrument. I think it's more applicable in larger schools. It was to give the underserved um, the attention they deserved. But it, it simply it really doesn't apply here as well as it should. Um, the, the sanctions do go up. I mean, you lose money. And you probably read about um, schools being almost closed because you, you, you can fire principals. It's like, you know, Dallas Cowboys, you blame the coach, and you can uh, eliminate teachers. So if, you, you have to be in that list three, four, or five years for that to happen. And in some sections of the country, it's actually happened. Um, the other thing that comes with uh, No Child Left Behind and AYP is that we have to have teachers who are highly qualified. We don't do that. It's the same thing. Um, the uh, let you notify parents that your teachers are not highly qualified. We're all highly qualified in Cape Elizabeth, and we are locked into taking the National Assessment of Educational Progress uh, test every couple of years to do that. That's the NAEP test. The strangest thing of all, you've heard Steve talk about the standards. There are 51 different standards. It's a national law, but there are 50 states in the District of Columbia figuring out their own standards. So. Good luck. How, how do you get 100%? You can it. That's how you get 100%.
Any questions? You should go to Washington and just eye roll them. Just you know, get them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it goes back to, it's, it started in 2001, way back in the Clinton administration. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to a Dex, but some people like it. There's that eye roll. Have we made your evening? Have you done it? <laughs> so, but Pond Cove is okay, but we, I'm sure we'll get back on that list in some regards another year. I don't think people will be uh, leaving the, leaving Pond Cove. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. You saved me a lot of trouble. <laughs> And if you look at Cape Elizabeth High School, right. you see the same in 2010, Green, they uh, made all target areas in mm -hmm. safe hop, and they also met all the target areas in math. And then in 2010 and 11, they have made AYP just like Pond Cove has in both reading and math. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, under communications, is um, resignation. Alan? We have one resignation in here from Carly Main, uh, who has been on uh, leave this year. And she did send a letter saying that after a lot of consideration, uh, she has decided to resign her position uh, at the middle school. Uh, she also did mention what a great opportunity it has been to teach in Cape Elizabeth and uh, really hates to leave, but feels that this is the right time with two, two, little, two young children. Thank you. Okay, moving on to new business, 7A. Um, consideration to approve the transfer of 146934 from contingency. Um, Alan, do you want me to Do you want to go? Uh, you, we, what we did is we did this in the Finance Committee, and of course, Kathy is not here. Uh, if you'd like to explain that, or sure. I can either way, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, right, I have both you. of them right here. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, I only have to take the first one, right? Um, <clears throat> So we um, were notified by uh, Dominic that uh, we have two out-of-district placements for special education that are required um, and some need for additional ed techs for instructional support. Uh, and um, along also with all of this is, with the out-of-district placement is the out-of-district transportation of $4,500. So um, we need to transfer 146934 out of contingency um, to these line items. Um, so I would like to make a motion that we approve the transfer of $146,934 from contingency. Is there a second? Second. You know, any discussion? Questions? All those in favor? I'm sorry, I did have one question. Sorry. Okay, I've called the question, David. Okay, I'm too slow then. I won't ask my question. So, uh, all those in favor? Five. All those opposed? One. Okay, one. Okay. And then the next item is consideration to approve the revised federal jobs fund application. Um, again, this is uh, because we had originally approved um, the allocation of some of the federal jobs funds to go to uh, a potential curtailment for this year, but we were informed um, by the governor that there would be no uh, curtailment to education. Um, so we are revising it to um, basically increase the offset in fiscal year 12, um, which would increase the offset to 4.7 teachers. Um, that's $452,523.60 for next year. Uh, that's basically an increase of about, um, Pauline, 100, 135 or something like that? Right. That was a, so, so basically this is a transfer of use of funds from fiscal year 11 to fiscal year 12 of about 130 some odd thousand dollars. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that we approve this revised Federal Jobs Fund application. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, John. Discussion or questions? Yes, David. Um, I'm curious about the justification. Uh, I'm wondering whether or not there is the, I don't think this was ever answered, we're transferring some students out of district and paying a large sum of money to do that. I assume that that frees up some time for special ed 
No. Actually, that question was asked in the Finance Committee meeting, and the answer um, was provided by Dominic that these are students that are in the high school. They are not receiving direct one-on-one um, -on -one, um, ed tech or teachers the way that we have them in other parts of the district. Um, so unfortunately, it does not free up any funds. I didn't think it freed up funds. The question was if... Or staff. They're, they're, they are these, the staff that work with these students are also simultaneously working with a significant number of other students. So the bucket was already overflowing and now it's just level? The bucket level. was where it needed to be and, and it's still pretty tight, yes. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor? Five. All those opposed? One. Next is consideration to approve the following co-curricular job descriptions. Alan. Uh, I think that goes to uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Linda. I'm sorry, Linda. It's okay. Um, this past year, we have worked diligently uh, with the, within the HR committee to complete our packet of job descriptions uh, for the co-curricular. It does include administrative stipend positions as well as student activity stipend positions at all the schools as well as district-wide. Um, the board has been presented with a complete packet of all of the job descriptions. And at this time, I would like to make a motion to approve all of them en masse, <laughs> um, the co-curricular job descriptions as presented by the HR committee. Thank you, Linda. Second? Second. Thank you, John. Any questions or discussion? I will just say that this is a tome to be <laughs> gilded and admired. That's an amazing amount of work. So thank you to all the staff um, and the board members, right. Alan, who worked on this. So. And a special recognition to Pauline, who um, tracked our progress throughout the whole process <laughs> and would keep us on track if we happened to miss one here or there. So. A special thank you to you. And I'd like to add a special thank you to Linda because she really had shepherded this. John and I have only been on it for about a year, but there was a massive amount of work done before we got there. And um, quite frankly, we basically offered a few tweaks, and that was about it. It was a great job before our time, and that was Linda. Well, I, you know, the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, I'm sure, will be most pleased that we can now present them with job descriptions for all of those stipend positions that appear in the budget on an annual basis. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Six zero. Thank you very much. Okay. Consideration to, um, actually it's not to approve, it's just policies for first reading. There's no approval needed. Correct. Linda? Correct. This is, these are just policies being brought forth for our first reading. The policy committee met October 21st, I believe. Uh, at that time, Gary presented several of the technology policies that were um, presented at a conference that he attended with Drum, Drummond and Woodsum. Um, a lot of these policies needed to get updated. And, uh, going to go through and read the list. We have the GS, GCSA employee computer and internet use. We also have GCSAR employee computer use and internet use rules. We have IJND Cape Elizabeth School District website. IJND slash R the website guidelines. <laughs> IJNDB, student computer and internet use. IJNDBR, student computer and internet use rules. There were some minor adjustments to the policies as presented by Gary at our policy committee meeting. Uh, a lot of them were just some uh, language changes that he made. Um, Copies of the policies have all been presented to the board, and we'll be, we'd be happy to look at any changes that you might want to make for the November policy meeting. 
Okay. So if um, any board member or citizen has any um, suggestions or issues with these policies, please let the policy committee know at the next meeting. And these will be voted on in the December business meeting. Okay. okay. Consideration to approve the following extracurricular staff nominations. Uh, would you like me to read them all? <laughs> you said no. I, all I will say to you then that they are all positions that already exist with one exception, and that is with uh, Mary Ellen Town, who's first team volleyball, and that is a new position paid for by the boosters. All the others are, are part of the budget or by boosters, one or the other. Thank you, Alan. May I have a motion, please? I move that we approve um, the following extracurricular staff nominations as presented by the superintendent. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, John. Any discussion or questions? Linda. Just have a quick question. Um, in previous years, the girls ice hockey uh, was working, was collaborating with one of the other schools. Is that a practice still continuing? Yes. Good. Great. Any other questions? Okay. All those in favor? Six zero. Thank you, Alan. Consideration to approve high school choral trip to New York City, May 6th through 8th, 2011. And you have that request from Larry, uh, Larry Allen, who is our staff choral teacher. Uh, they will be going to uh, New York City, as you said, on May 6th. Uh, it, is, uh, it involves one school day and it involves two nights, so therefore it has to come to you. Uh, it talks about the opportunity the students will have to perform in a musical, immersed setting, and receive uh, adjudicated comments concerning that performance. He did attach to this a uh, summary uh, from the Heritage uh, Festivals. Uh, the transportation is paid for by Heritage, uh, for Heritage Festivals, uh, and they will have 12 to 20 students, two chaperones, which is one school staff member and one parent. Uh, there are arrangements for mixed gender. Cost is 379. 279 for accommodations and travel within New York and $100 for travel to New York and breakfast on Saturday. Uh, interestingly, I found this interesting when I talked about it with the finance committee the other day, I guess the planning committee the other day. Their fundraising has been an Applebee's pancake breakfast, entertaining at assisted care facilities, talent, karaoke, music, performances at the Buzz. Mm. And so they've been able to raise their money that way. They have taken care of all of the insurance and other pieces to this. Uh, this was signed the other day by me, but for some reason it got <laughs> printed without it. But Rebecca saw it signed by me. It. <laughs> and so this is what they are requesting. And because it is an overnight and uh, within a certain number of miles, I do need to have you uh, respond to this. Can I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the Cape Elizabeth High School uh, concert choir field trip as Recommended by the superintendent. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mary. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Six zero. Okay. I hope they have a fabulous time. Mm, sounds like yeah. a great one. Yeah. Okay. Consideration to approve a staff member's request to use 20 accrued sick leave days. And the reason this has been written this way is there was a request by the staff member not to put their name forward for the town because they have not announced it to everyone at this point in time. Again, we did have a discussion about this and the feeling was that uh, those 20 accrued sick leave days, I believe, should be approved. And uh, at that at a meeting we had the other day with a couple of the board members. So I would take it for a motion of how you want to go ahead with that. Okay. Um, so is there a motion um, for the request? Uh, I move that we approve the staff members request to use 20 accrued sick days as presented. Great. Uh, is there a second? A second. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion? Um, I have a question. It, it seems it's a, it's a, we, we were presented with an impassioned or, de or a detailed case for this request. Is, isn't, isn't there a policy in place that would the difference in this specifically is this is re involves an adoption as opposed to a natural birth. And we don't have a don't an adoption have a policy. policy. So that is one thing you're going to have to look at. This is the first time in my time here, and I guess forever we've had that, had that 
the situation. So Rebecca and I had discussed okay. this. So I could get well, some that, sense that, that was a surprise to me that we that it seemed to me that we would have had a, an adoption policy in place. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor? Six zero. Okay. Consideration to approve. May I use her name? Tarabucci. Tarabucci's request for an extended leave of absence, April through June 2011. And again, you have received the letter that she is expecting a baby, and what she is requesting that she have the time off, which she would normally have at birth, but also requesting the extended leave through the remainder of the school year. And she is a teacher at Pond Cove. Mm -hmm. May I have a motion? Um, I'll move that we approve Tarabucci's request for an extended leave of absence April through June 2011. Thank you, Mary. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, John. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Six here. Okay. Um, item 7I, athletic trip request. You, you have a fairly new one that came before before me yesterday, I believe, and is on the agenda tonight. Uh, is a very tight time sequence, so we brought it tonight. This is Vasily Boys and Girls Cause Country uh, for Friday, November 12th through Saturday, November 13th. The New England Championships in Thetford. Sounds all right, right? Vermont. And uh, Jeff, I don't know if you'd like to speak to that briefly. This is for both boys and girls. Yeah, the, the, this information, I do apologize, but we do get it um, in a short time frame, so it's, it's one of those things that just worked out well that our meeting was uh, today. But uh, this is for the New England Championships. Our teams have uh, partic participated in this um, for a number of, a number of years. It, it, uh, this particular trip's a little bit further than it has been. Last year it was in New Hampshire, so it was uh, just a day trip. But, um, it would involve uh, eight boys and eight girls, um, members of the Boys and Girls Cross Country team. Okay. Um, we have a motion. I move that we approve the field trip request for the cross country teams to attend the regional New England New England Regional Championship. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mary. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Six zero. Six zero. Sorry. I'm a little slow. Today. I saw. <laughs> you were there in spirit. I counted you. Okay. Next, our job descriptions. Linda. The HR committee met with um, Janet from Community Services. She had a couple of job descriptions that we began review on last year and. By accident, they have slipped through the cracks. So we re-reviewed them this morning at our meeting, um, along with a couple of other new job descriptions that she brought forth for us. Beginning with the administrative clerk that she presented to us. There was only one minor change that we made at the meeting, and that was under the terms of employment to keep the verbiage uh, similar to that of all of the, our other job descriptions. Um, the other one was the administrative assistant to the community services director. Again, just one minor change under the terms of employment to keep that consistent with all the other job descriptions. She did bring forth two new job descriptions to us, uh, youth program coordinator and adult program coordinator. Uh, again, these job descriptions are for the positions themselves, not for individuals at this time. She, one of these is a full-time position. One of them is a part-time position. She did make some minor adjustments to the existing job description just to include computer proficiency, which wasn't covered in the prior job description, and um, also a, the minor, same minor change on the terms of employment to uh, deal with compensation and number of hours worked. Um, at the end of our discussion this morning at the meeting, um, I asked the committee, they recommended that we forward the copies that you've been provided with forward tonight for approval. Okay, great. Thank you, Linda. Is there a motion? 
I move that we approve the community services job descriptions as submitted. Second. HR committee chair. <laughs> second. Okay, David. David seconds. All right, any discussion or questions? I have a question. Um, does this have any consequence on the current employees? Um, does this come up for a review on? Oh. Nope. I'd like to thank Janet. First of all, she has uh, kind of picked up the reins from her predecessor and um, done a wonderful job as far as providing very succinct information for positions for all of her employees. All those in favor? Six zero. Okay. Um, committee reports. Are there any reports from our committees that? Um, I would like to make a comment. The um, this was my last uh, meeting of the HR committee. We did also start discussions on the superintendent re review and revision to the superintendent's job description. Um, being quite a lengthy document that it is. Uh, we didn't get too far into our revisions. However, Andrea was kind enough to make note of the revisions that we get, did get to today for um, the new board that will be sitting. Um, so they will probably be picking up from there and going on. And best of luck to them on that. I would encourage them um, <laughs> to try to get to that as quickly as possible, right. given the process that's going to be coming up in the next six months. And the next policy committee, um, just so that everybody knows, is going to be on November 18th at 7 a.m. Oh, I just love that time. Thank you, Linda. We do. Get you up and get you going early. <laughs> Anything else for committee reports? Okay, public comment on non-agenda items. No, there's no public here. School board agenda requests. None. Announcement of upcoming meetings. I think we just actually had that. And there will. And if anybody is interested in other meetings, it's on the uh, town website. And do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Second. Can we have discussion on that for a second. No. <laughs> you missed I'm serious. It. <laughs> you want discussion on the uh, okay? Yes. <laughs> um, I just want to follow the correct procedure. I did not get it. I did not feel a, a, it was appropriate for me to make a comment about our chairperson, but I would now like to make it. Um, I would have to say I'm probably one of the ones this year she's most rolled her eyes at, or of uh, facial tits, et cetera. But I have to say, having practiced for 30 some odd years all around the country, major cities from Chicago to LA, Boston, Denver, I have never met <clears throat> with all those excellent lawyers as effective an advocate, as uh, intelligent, as um, formidable uh, a, a person on behalf of our school. And I think that our school system is really losing somebody extremely valuable, someone that I actually do enjoy debating with. Um, but I will have to say the quality uh, of the person that we're losing is, in my opinion, uh, nationally ranked. She ranks with some of the best people I've ever debated with who are throughout the country. And um, I, I, for one, will sorely miss her. That's very kind. Thank you, Dave. Yes. I'll miss rolling my eyes at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send some anyways. <laughs> All those in favor of adjourning. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you.